So an interesting thing I've noticed is when you go online and you, you Google Bitcoin ATM, and I sort of did this on accident, but you realize uh, like through the Google Maps that it's starting to become a bit ubiquitous, right? There's more and more of these, um, whether they're coin flip or whatever, more of these Bitcoin ATMs that are going up all over the place. And so the question logically becomes, how do I do that? Uh, you know, if I had a store or what have you, I just wanted to put up a, an ATM or license an ATM. How does that work? And what, what are the legal implications? And as a general rule, if you are just dealing with like a general, a regular cash ATM, um, there is no rule, right? It's usually a matter of registration here in uh, Chicago and Illinois. It's really just a matter of identifying where the ATM is going to be, the license number of the, the serial number of the ATM, so on and so forth. It's a rather simple registration as opposed to like an application. And then it invokes some rule, right? There's different rules in, in each state regarding ATM positioning, safety, things like that. You have to put it in a lighted area. It has to be serviced at certain times. And each state's going to be different. So, you know, you should really kind of consider that. But the reality is getting a Bitcoin ATM isn't the same as getting a cash ATM, obviously. And it's not just because you're getting Bitcoin out of it. What you're getting is, is actually effectuating a transaction, right? I'm putting in money and it's not for purposes of withdrawing Bitcoin. It's really for purposes of purchasing Bitcoin when you look at how these things operate. So for that reason, um, the rules aren't really the same. It's not really just a simple matter of registration. And I think if you put one of these up and register it, eventually I think something's going to befell you because you're not acting as simply a provider of, of cash on demand services. What you're doing is engaging in some degree of either sale or some degree of currency exchange, which goes back to the money transmitter or money remitters license and whether you need to get that. And my belief is, and many states have already adopted regulations that state this, is that you know owning a Bitcoin ATM isn't akin to open, owning a regular cash ATM. It's actually owning sort of a self-serve money remitter, a money transmitter license, or even money exchanger license. So uh, obviously it's a little bit different state by state, but it's something to to really think about, you know, in so much of these, it is an investment obviously to get a Bitcoin ATM. Very difficult from an operational standpoint to keep them, uh, keep them going. And, you know, they're all over the place and I get it. And the problem becomes obviously the registration. And if you look at the fees that, you know, you can charge, well, you know, weigh that against what, what your typical application fee for, for licensure is, and then your yearly bonding requirement, which can be, you know, three, five thousand dollars depending on credit and things of that nature. So, um, you know, in the states that have, and Illinois isn't one of them yet, at least, um, some of the other ones like New York are, uh, you know, you have to consider the cost and the potential licensure application if you're going to run a Bitcoin ATM because the reality is that Bitcoin ATM may actually not be profitable because the fees you can take arguably aren't going to be that high and you still have the issue of adoption. Like how many people conceivably would go to it? I, I can, you know, see from a casual glance where I live where Bitcoin is not particularly well adopted and well well um, well used by uh, merchants and all that. There's six or seven of them. So the question becomes, you know, within a five mile radius, how many? how much money could you conceivably get from them now that may change and hopefully it would but obviously there's some consideration in terms of of if in fact you do have to obtain a an actual state license as opposed to just basic registration which is the the de facto norm for uh, regular cash ATMs whether that's uh, something to consider so if you have any questions on it definitely check me out hit me up at tracyfirm.com talk to you